MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries is a mech combat sim that's brought down by a myriad of different issues. It released its first DLC, Heroes of the Inner Sphere, which patched up a lot of these issues and made the game feel like a more fully fleshed out experience, with new mechanics and progression systems. While the game isn't perfect by any means with this addition, it's a significant improvement and anyone into battle tech or mecha action in general can have a fun time with it. I summarized my thoughts on this game in a video I released a few months ago. Then, Legends of the Kestrel Lancers was released, out of nowhere, alongside its launch on PlayStation consoles. Suddenly, there was a tremendous surge of interest for the title, which I love to see. But is Legends of the Kestrel Lancers the same kind of redefining quality shift in the MechWarrior 5 experience as its previous DLC? Well, no. Thanks for watching! I suppose I should share my thoughts on why Kestrel Lancers isn't so great, but first I think I should clear some things up because the update for Kestrel Lancers may have been a little confusing for people who have already played MechWarrior 5. New features like the ability to swap between any four of your active mechs and the ability to punch things have been added to the core game. No DLC required for those to work. So if you were worried about having to buy a whole new DLC to give someone a, um, heavy fisting, that just comes with the base game now. There weren't any AI changes, so those of you that are annoyed by rock stupid AI lance mates, that issue's still only fixable with PC mods. The DLC adds three new map types, several different variations of existing mechs, and a new, albeit short, story-driven campaign. While the new maps are a welcome addition, the rest of the package is, in my opinion, pretty underwhelming. For contrast, Heroes of the Inner Sphere didn't just add entirely new mechs, but also new game systems to the base game that patched over some of its biggest flaws in progression. Kestrel Lancers had the opportunity to improve things further, but really dropped the ball in that aspect. Instead of adding new mechs, game modes, or game mechanics, Kestrel Lancers wants to tell you a story first and foremost. However, telling a story happens to be MechWarrior 5's biggest weakness. It's like watching your unfunniest friend get into stand-up comedy. My mother. Any of you have one of those? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I may have been far too nice in my original review by calling the story serviceable. It's actually kinda bad. They give you a mystery to solve, revenge to seek, and secrets to uncover, but if you don't like the story, it can largely be ignored while you travel the galaxy kicking ass and raiding defenseless farmers. I remembered thinking through the main missions that I wanted a more linear, story-driven campaign to convey the story to me. Kestrel Lancers is my monkey paw wish come true. Starting a game on Kestrel Lancers, Strong arms you into the main story with limited time contracts that lock you into prolonged campaign scenarios in which you have limited time to repair, cannot travel, and you can only purchase from a limited selection of new mechs. This is crazy to me because it keeps you away from buying hero mechs or interacting with cantinas, which were some of the best parts of the previous DLC. These prolonged campaign contracts present some challenging scenarios you haven't had to deal with in MechWarrior 5 before, though. Multi-mission campaigns leave a lot of room for error. You may be forced into launching missions with broken weapons or armor because you just don't have time to fix them. If a mech takes too much damage or gets totaled, it's probably just going to take up space in your roster for a few missions while it takes time to repair. You might be better off just selling those off and buying a new one. You can actually get yourself into a far more impossible set of circumstances than ever before if you make too many mistakes. While I do appreciate the new story campaign for its unique set of challenges in both missions and mech management, I feel like the whole experience tends toward tedious rather than fun. The mission design in Kestrel Lancers here serves to highlight flaws in MechWarrior's core gameplay. No checkpoints usually wasn't a problem in MechWarrior, but I had multiple occasions where I would need to replay a more difficult mission three or four times to get through it. 
This campaign can be kind of grueling, and having to restart these 15 to 30 minute long campaign missions multiple times made me want to tear my eyes out of my skull on more than one occasion. Here, I'm on my way to extraction from one of the worst missions in the campaign, when a stray turret gets a lucky shot and forces me to redo the entire thing. Nothing feels worse than this. You do have the option of importing a previous save to go into Kestrel Answers with, but doing that just feels like cheating as you can just kind of trounce all the missions in a lance full of assault mechs. While playing all of these grueling missions, you're also told a pretty poor story that relies heavily on knowledge of Battletech lore. At least I think this would make more sense if I knew the lore. I don't know anything about the Battletech lore, I'm not that much of a nerd. I know the events here are based off the Fourth Succession Wars, but I don't think a good story should rely on you to go read the Wikipedia page to understand what's happening. Someone clearly had an encyclopedic knowledge of Operation Rat, but if you don't know about the Fourth Succession War, you're not going to learn much about it here. It's confusing to keep track of everything going on outside of the broad strokes, and I think this is just down to sloppy storytelling. There's no motivation or reason for most of the events. You just do them because you're told to. I know you can write a much better story than this in the Battletech universe, too. I'm currently playing through the Battletech game by Paradox Interactive, and they managed to write an engaging storyline that you want to see through to the end by setting it in a small corner of the galaxy and making you relate to the main characters involved in the narrative. There's drama and plot twists and good characters. That game has some other problems too, though, but we'll talk about that one of these days. MechWarrior 5 kind of kicks its legs in the kiddie pool of storytelling by comparison. What's most frustrating is that it comes so close to being decent towards the end. But for that, I'll have to give you a little spoiler warning. Hop to the timecode here if you want to go into this game blind. Once you start a new campaign for Kestrel Lancers, you receive a message from a representative for House Davion, who tells you that your dad was cool and that they're looking for some mercenaries to play on the opposing team for their awkward board game date night, and your unit, along with the Crater Cobras, are the lucky winners. See, some royalty from House Davion and House Steiner are going to get married and unite their houses, and the only way their militaries can learn to play nice with each other is by getting clowned on by mercenaries, together. After showing them that the real war games were the friends we made along the way, they say they have a big contract coming up for you in a few months, so you best get your stuff together. You then have a few months to, um, play the game. You can only do a few jobs and maybe stop at a few stores to buy new mechs or stock up on weapons, you are then contracted as part of the Fourth Secession War as a special ops unit for Operation Rat. You then go about invading a fortress planet of the Compellan Confederation just because they want it, I guess. It's supposed to be part of a wedding gift in the lore, but that's not really communicated too well here. You're just told to invade this planet. After taking over the fortress world, some stuff happens and the code books for Operation Rat are stolen and it's up to you to get the MacGuffin back. The Capellans get them sent to a planet called Sarna before you can stop them, and you are then sent there without any backup to make sure they don't read your special code book. Upon entering the system, you find it impossible to contact anyone outside of the system, and I guess your ship crashes too because you can't just leave. Being stranded on a hostile world with no reinforcements is the most compelling idea the story has. You then find other survivors of a previous assault and start putting together an outnumbered ragtag band of mercenary mech warriors to get a message off world. Then the Galactic ISP service, the Comstar Alliance, shows up to stop you. They start talking about some royal family drama involving characters I haven't heard of up to this point, or maybe I have, I just wasn't paying attention. But they talk over the part where you get assaulted by about a dozen other mechs, so I really don't have a clue what they're going on about. It's 
It's like some drunk guy is trying to tell me about a conspiracy theory while I'm trying to watch a band play in a really loud bar. This bit is really confusing. I have no idea what this faction's motivations are, and they just come up for this one mission. Again, it's another thing you need to refer to the lore for. You eventually meet up with the Crater Cobras, your partners from the very first mission of the DLC. It's nice that they had a character we actually recognize show up for the finale. I still can't remember his name, though. You successfully get a message off-world and then have to survive a final battle until reinforcements arrive. You're then told that you did a great job, but because of the nature of your missions, everything is considered classified and no one will ever know what you did. It's a pretty disappointing capstone. You actually end up with a fairly stacked roster at the end of the campaign due to having to trade up throughout. But I actually ended with less money than I started with. This DLC could be seen as a way to turbo start a new playthrough as it puts you through a ton of high level missions at turbo speed, but I find it much more annoying than just starting a new campaign. I would have hoped that Kestrel Lancers would continue to improve the main game as Heroes of the Inner Sphere did before it, but outside of a few new maps, this really isn't worth the price of admission. I did enjoy going back to Mech Warrior 5 to try out some of these excellent mods that you all recommended, but I'm going to talk about those in a separate video as this script is already getting a little too long. So, would I recommend Legends of the Kestrel Lancers? No! I would give this one a pass unless you are a really die-hard Battletech fan that's familiar with the lore. Well, that's all for this week, everybody, and I would really like to wish the Battletech community as a whole a very nice, please don't fight with me, this is just my opinion. Anyways, if you like the video, the subscribe button is down below, and so is the like button. And also, there's a comment box where you can type comments. It actually really helps my channel since I'm so small, so doing any of those things is really appreciated. Next time, we'll be talking about, um, something else. Bye!